there was a whole session on gene therapy, and uh, this was uh, um, mainly um, uh, focusing on the various uh, aspects of gene therapy that are available at the moment. Luckily, that there are different approaches for different disorders, which are targeting the different genes. Uh, so, uh, of course, there was a lot of attention on the follow-up of the results for spinal muscular atrophy, but also on the ongoing uh, studies on Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, and uh, uh, there was also a lot of attention of the new studies uh, on limb girdle muscular dystrophy. This is the first time that uh, uh, the limb girdle muscular dystrophy is receiving this sort of attention. And of course, for limb girdle muscular dystrophy, the mechanism is different because the proteins are different. And unlike dystrophin, which is a, a large gene uh, for uh, limb girdle muscular dystrophy, the approach can uh, uh, contain the vector can contain the whole gene, so uh, all all these things are becoming very exciting. Dysferlin is an, is has a very important message for gene therapy, and the message is that when we when we delivered the genes with with adeno associated virus or AAV, we have a restriction of how much how the size of the gene that can be delivered. The five the the size of the gene is less than five kilobases, so um, and many genes are over that size, and and uh, the Duchenne gene is an example. For Duchenne, we had to edit the gene, make it smaller, and less sure about whether um, whether that would show efficacy. And fortunately, the story is that it is it is working. Um, other genes will not uh, that can't be edited in the same way and won't fit in AAV have to be handled in a different way. And what we did in Dysferlin was we cut the gene in half and put it in half of it went in one in one uh, in one group of AAVs and another another the other half went into another group of AVs we made millions of copies of both of them and then injected them at the same time and when we delivered the that the both copies in in uh, in two different AVs they went to the muscle cells with our fingers crossed and when the gene and when the two halves were delivered they merged and formed one large gene and showed efficacy. And again, that's another first for our center. Um, so this was by a method called homologous recombination. The genes combined once they got into the muscle cell and showed efficacy. Now we only have two patients. So that is really a study in its infancy and will take more but that's proof of principle to start with.